Uh, my name is Alice Wanjiro Njoroge, and I'm at Ruben Center, Demo Garden. Uh, this is a farm uh, that came up as a result of bringing in suggestions for people who are living in formal settlements and in refugee camps to be food secure. And all this is to show them that it is possible to have fresh vegetables from their own spaces. This can also be replicated in the refugee camps where they don't have spaces and they are also food insecure. This can make them have their own food, generate income because they can be able to sell to people who are around them and this will make them be able to sustain their gardens. Here is our integrated garden. The integrated garden has three components. We have fish, we have chicken and we have vegetables on the rooftop. In this garden, uh, it can be put in a very small space because the tank doesn't have to be this big. The small tanks can also be used and then for the chicken coop, it is made with recycled timber and wires. And for the rooftop garden also, it is recycled timber that has made the boxes. We have catfish, we have local chicken, and we have different varieties of vegetables. The reason why we have catfish here is because for the catfish, they have both the gills and they have the lungs. So they can be able to survive uh, in water that is not fresh water. Like you can put water and change it after a month and the catfish will survive and grow very well. For the materials that we've used to make here, these are waste materials and uh, recycled materials. For the timber, it is recycled. For the wires, these are the wires that have been just thrown anywhere and we collect them and we use them uh, to, to, we use them as mesh for the chicken to have some breathing space. Uh, for the garden, we've used the rooftop of the chicken coop. And the materials that are used there are, uh, we have uh, a black polythene bag that is there, polythene paper, and the timber is also recycled. So what happens is the water that is here in the fish pond, we use it to water the plants that are on the rooftop. From the rooftop, we get the waste vegetables which, uh, and the vegetable stalks also, which we feed to the chicken. Then from the chicken, we get uh, the droppings. The droppings is what we feed to the, to the fish. So it is a low cost garden, I would say an integrated garden, because it doesn't require, uh, it does not require a lot of money to maintain it. Since food for the fish comes from the chicken, and food from the chicken comes from a rooftop garden. And for the rooftop garden, we as human beings also in the informal settlements, uh, we feed from the same vegetables. So the waste from the vegetables, again, we feed it to the chicken and from the chicken we get the waste which is fed to the fish. Uh, we get the water from the fish pond to the gardens using a bucket. If you have a bucket, you can be able to use it. This is a recycled bucket that was being used in the house, but right now it is in the, in the garden. So you just fetch the fertilized water. Remember this water from the fish is fertilized uh, because it has some uh, good fertilizer for the plants from the fish droppings. Uh, here we have a food pump, uh, which of course is made from uh, metal, uh, recycled metal would say, waste metal or scrap metal. So for this, it is easy to maintain and to also assemble. So for this, it helps us get water from the tank to the garden. So you just pump like that and you can see the water is getting to the gardens. And farming becomes fun, very fun. Uh, this integrated garden has so many advantages because the best thing is that it can be used, it can be used or reduced to the size that somebody wants, depending on the space that they have. You don't have to use this tank. You can even use a 20 liter jerry can as a fish pond, then put up a, a small coop and then have a 20 liter container as your garden up there, as, a, as your rooftop garden. So this garden is uh, flexible, I would say, and very easy to maintain. Uh, our garden might not look very beautiful, uh, just because it has been made using recycled material that is available everywhere in the world. But the benefits, of course, supersedes the beauty of it. Reasons being we have vitamins, 
in terms of uh, the vegetables we have. We have proteins from the fish uh, and also we have protein from the, uh, from the chicken. So this can be done everywhere. So beauty aside and health on top. Uh, here uh, we have uh, rabbits of different breeds. We have California white, we have chinchilla, we have the Dutch, uh, we have the New Zealand, and we also have the, uh, the earlobe. So the benefits of these rabbits is uh, they are rich in proteins and also their urine is a pesticide which we use in the garden. And also the droppings are manure. So what we do is uh, we collect them at this point. We have pipes. Like you see this is a big rabbit and we only feed them uh, with vegetables and hay. And if you look at the hatches, they are made from recycled materials, which are easily available. And of course they are available in every part of the world. So for the hatches, you can see uh, they, are, they, are, they are good sizes, which fit our big rabbits. And you can also see we have pipes. These pipes, waste pipes are recycled waste pipes, which we've used to tap the urine from the rabbits. So the urine is tapped in a way that from the hatches it comes to this point. This is the collection point of the urine. And for the droppings, we just use uh, our hands to get them off from here and put them in a sack. Then after two weeks, that is when they're ready. Okay, besides uh, keeping the animals for protein and also for learning purposes. We also use uh, the, the waste or the, the cow dung or the goat waste also to make manure tea. Manure tea, we use it to improve our soil and also to have our plants grow very well. This is organic fertilizer made from uh, goat, goat droppings. And what happens is you just have to look for a container of whatever size you have. And then you get a sack. A sack is this. And a wire or a string to tie here. So what happens is you take a little amount of the cow droppings or the goat dropping that you have or the chicken. Then you put it in a sack. Then you put water in your container. Then you suspend the sack, wire or your string, you suspend it like a tea bag. Okay? That is why it is called manure tea. So when it is suspended like this, after three days, you come and just shake it a little bit like that. So that the contents that are inside your sack goes to the, to the water. Then for this, you cover you cover your mixture for seven days. After seven days, that is when you come and open it. It will have a very strong smell, which probably many people will not like. But again, it is all about garden and going organic. Then you get one part of the manure tea. Remember, it is very strong. And when you put it directly to your plants, it will scorch. So you're supposed to dilute it to the ratio of one is to two. One is to two. So if you get one part of the manure tea, you dilute it with two parts of water. Then you can put it or you spray it in your garden. It is organic. The best thing with organic fertilizers like this is you can harvest your vegetables even after two days. You just wash them and, and cook them. Called, uh, this is a vertical garden and it, has, it is a drip irrigation, self drip irrigation garden. This means uh, it waters itself and if you check you will see when I press the water comes out to our garden. So for us to get to this it was just a container like this, a milk can like this which had been thrown. So for us to turn this into a garden all you need is this container and a knife.
then from the space or the wall that you have, you fix it. When you grow things vertically, since there is more space going up, the plants that you grow here will be many than the ones on the ground. Because the space on the ground, you have to space your plants in your small space and you cannot increase it. But going up, we have spaces. So you'll find that if we have a plant, uh, our vertical wall is carrying about 20 plants, on the ground, the ones that will go there will only be about six or seven. And you can see for my beetroot, I have beetroots here that are planted on the ground. There are about eight. And you know, this space is almost uh, half of the wall. And if you look at the half of the wall, I have more than 20 plants on the wall. For the weak irrigation, we have a material that is called weak. This is what we put inside our, our garden. This helps to move water from this reserve, the reserve container, to the garden. So you just put it at the middle. You can see it is at the middle and then you suspend it down to the, to the reserve, the water reservoir, this one. So the water seeps from here going up to our plant. So all you need is uh, a little time, maybe once a week, that is we put water in the containers that are be below our garden. So the, what, the garden is self-watering. Uh, for pesticides, you can see we have something here that has grown. This is called uh, the Mexican marigold. This is, this is uh, what we use as a pesticide in our garden. And we also use, you remember I also said we also use the rabbit urine, it is good. And you can see even uh, between the plants we put some onions. The onions uh, have a scent or a smell that pests do not like. So when they smell the onion, the pesticides just, uh, the, the pests disappear. Here I have uh, cow droppings or cow dung. I have the rabbit droppings and the goat droppings. So this is what we use as manure in our garden. So what happens is, when you come to the garden, you have to mix your soil with this very well. And we also have dry grass, which we mix with the soil. This helps the soil not compact and the soil to be rich with nutrients that will be used by the plant to grow. This is our tire corn garden. It is made from recycled car tires. So what we've done is for the car tires, the small size, you just open it, design it the way you want. It have several purposes, like one for beauty, two for space, space going up. If you have a space just like this and you cannot uh, extend it, you can do it going up. That is why we say using corn. So for this corn, you can go as higher as you wish, depending with the soil that you have and the seedlings that you have. And again, you can see we have assorted plants in it. Uh, we have black nightshade, we have spider plant, we have spinach, uh, we have capsicum. So this, all this shows you, you can grow different types of crops or of plants in a corn tire garden. Uh, here we have a garden uh, that is made from recycled materials and uh, below it you can see we have an open drainage just because there was no space so we've decided to use the available space which was on top of an open drainage and uh, we've made it uh, using recycled timber and we've been able to plant so many uh, vegetables. So this can be used in a school setup where there is no space but there are drainages they can be made use of and also in the informal settlements because we have drainages all everywhere we can put up gardens like this we can use the timber and remember it has some polythene bag inside to make it not to seep water from the sides and the bottom and we also have the container gardens the multi-story gardens uh, all these can be done and the vegetables will be clean and healthy because the water from the drainage cannot get to the to the garden so this is a good one to do in whichever set setup you have and uh, maximization of the available space. So 
this is our compost box uh, that uh, we're preparing so that we can make our compost from here. You can see we have the dry matter. For a compost, you need the dry matter. Uh, we also will also need the greens and we'll also need some soil. So we are assembling all the materials here so that we start doing it. And remember also for our compost, we'll have to cover it up just to make sure uh, it does not get rained on. It does not get rained on. And then we'll have to be turning it after every two weeks and watering it a little bit just to lower the temperatures a bit. And then after about three months, three to four months, it will be ready and we'll have it in our gardens, the ones we've been doing. The vertical gardens, the box gardens, the rooftop gardens, and we'll mix it there. It will be rich with nutrients, which will help our crops to grow well. Uh, urban farming in the informal settlements is possible. Everybody can be able to do this since it is affordable. It is a concept that is affordable and we are here as Ruben Center to train, that is to empower you on doing it and give you support in terms of showing you how to do it where you don't understand and even advice on how you can use your small space. Our Ruben Center Garden aims at inspiring, educating, assisting communities and schools to get their own food security by growing crops that will help them in terms of uh, health, that is eradicate malnutrition and also help people have money in their pockets.